Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. This is part two of lesson 2.2. We're going to focus on writing definitions as conditional statements. In this example, what we're going to do is take a look at the statement, guitar players are musicians. And what we're going to do is we're going to write out the if then form. We're going to write out the converse. We'll write out the inverse and we'll write out the contrapositive. And then what we're going to do is decide if each one of those statements is a true statement or a false statement. So I'm going to start with this if then form. When we're doing if then form, we have to find our hypothesis and our conclusion. So our hypothesis is going to be that whoever we're talking about, this person plays guitar. And then the conclusion is that they are a musician. So my if then form is going to say, if you play guitar, and our conclusion will say, then you are a musician. And now we're going to look at this statement and we're going to decide is this a true statement or is this a false statement. So if you play guitar, are you actually a musician? And the answer would be yes. This one is a true statement. Playing that instrument makes you a musician. So the if then form of this statement is true. Now for the converse, remember for the converse we switch the if and then pieces around. So we're going to change the order of the way this thing is written. So we would say if you are a musician and our conclusion this time would be that you play guitar. And again, we're going to look at this statement and decide, is it true or false? So if you're a musician, do you have to play guitar? No, that's not necessarily the case because there's a bunch of different instruments out there that you could play. So being a musician doesn't automatically mean that you have to play the guitar. Next thing we're writing out is the inverse. And remember for the inverse, we're going to take that original if then statements and we're going to negate the hypothesis and the conclusion. So we're going to add a couple of knots in there. So the hypothesis would say, if you don't play guitar, then our conclusion would be that you are not a musician. And again, we're deciding, is this a true statement or is this a false statement? If you don't play guitar, does that automatically make you not a musician? And this one is also going to be a false statement. Much like the one directly above, there are a bunch of different instruments that you could play and still be considered a musician. You don't have to play guitar to be a musician. Then our last one that we're going to write out is that contrapositive. So remember, for the contrapositive, we look at the converse and then negate each piece. So the converse was this second one that we wrote out. If you are a musician, then you play guitar. So our contrapositive would say, if you are not a musician. And then our conclusion would be that you don't play guitar. And again, checking if this one is true or false. So if you're not a musician, does that mean that you don't play guitar? This one is going to be true because if you're not a musician, that means you don't play any instrument at all. When two statements are both true or both false, then we call those things equivalent statements. So if we think about what we did on the last slide, the if then form and the contrapositive were both true. So those statements are equivalent and the converse and the inverse were both false, so those ones are also equivalent statements. When we're talking about defining terms or writing out definitions, those things can be written as either a conditional if-then statement or as its converse. Both of those things are going to be true, so those would also be considered equivalent statements. So taking a look at this definition about perpendicular lines, the conditional statement would say, if two lines intersect to form a right angle, then they are perpendicular lines. It's converse, we would flip those things around, so we would say, if two lines are perpendicular lines, then they intersect to form a right angle. Both of those things mean exactly the same thing. These are equivalent statements because both of these things are true. Perpendicular lines make right angles. When we've got a conditional statement and its converse both being true, then we can write them as a single statement, which is called a biconditional 
statement. And the way we make something a biconditional statement is by adding the phrase if and only if. So here's our conditional statement and that converse that we looked at on the last page. So if two lines intersect to form a right angle, then they are perpendicular lines. And the converse was if two lines are perpendicular lines, then they intersect to form a right angle. If we're going to write out this biconditional statement, then what it would look like is it would say two lines are perpendicular lines. If and only if they intersect to form a right angle. So we combined these two statements, the conditional and the converse, to make this biconditional with that if and only if inside of the statement. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.